Hello and welcome to the second video in a mini-series introducing adaptive music in FMOD Studio. This video is designed to get you up and running with logic operations and adaptive music in FMOD Studio. My name is Sally and I'm the sound designer at Firelight Technologies. Today we're going to have a look at upgrading our music piece from the first video with some parameters and effects. This will help FMOD Studio newcomers to level up their knowledge of audio for games and help refresh FMOD Pros on some of the FMOD features. We will introduce the role of game parameters in driving adaptive music. We will see how we can use a health parameter to control track volumes and effects in a truly dynamic way. I will introduce you to the effect deck as well and how we can automate our effects properties to help communicate the health of the character to the player. In the previous video we had set up a looping segment for the base level of intensity for our music system. Next we will introduce the concept of a game parameter and use it as we continue constructing our piece of music. In FMOD a parameter is defined as an input from the game engine which is used to influence the audio in real time. The audio adapts to the gameplay via these parameters. Parameters can be predefined such as distance or orientation value. It is also possible to define custom parameters such as RPM from a car engine, threat level to a player, or in our situation, the health percentage. The best way to understand what you can do with a parameter is through an example, so let's get into it. So what we'll do first is we'll create a new parameter that has the name health. We do this just by pressing this big plus button here and pressing add parameter. What we'll do is we'll name it and we'll set the range, which is the minimum and maximum here. Now the range of our parameter has will be zero to 100. This is so that we can scale it to a percentage in the game engine. A really handy tip for you when you create a new parameter is to set the initial value straight away. This you do by setting the value with the controller near your transport controls right up here. And what you do is you right click on the dial and you select set as initial value. What we will do is we will set our health initial value to 100%. Right click and then press set as initial value. Whenever our music event is restarted, which will be at the start of a level, the health parameter will reset to 100%. Now we can use this parameter to automate track volumes and effects properties. We want to fade in the choir as player health gets closer to zero. To do this, we switch over to the health parameter tab, which is selected right here. It's different to the timeline tab. The timeline tab has the bar numbers across the top and gives us access to our logic tracks. When we select the health parameter, we have access to the logic tracks as well, which we might want to set up over the course of the health percent value range. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to fade in the choir over the course of the health parameter. And we will set this up so that as health gets closer to zero, the choir is much louder. To automate anything, even according to a parameter, what we do is we right click on the volume dial and we can select add automation. This gives us a volume chart right here. Now, we can draw in the curve that we want by clicking in this volume track. Where we click corresponds to the volume metering on the left hand side here. So when the health is at 10 or below, we want the choir to be at zero decibels. And when the health is at 40 or above, we want the choir to be at negative 40 decibels. Now we'll hit play to listen to what this sounds like. The choir is naturally quite quiet at the start of this piece. As you can see, there is activity in the volume meter, so we know that the effect is working as we designed it to. Now, at the moment, the fade-in of the choir across the health parameter isn't very impactful and it doesn't really give an impression of intensity at all because it is so smooth. To create more gravity and impact in the lower health range, we use the diamond in the middle of the curve to push out the curve into a concave shape. Now, 
We can add the same volume automation to each track if we wanted to, and you can totally go to town and dynamically manipulate the mix over the full 100 point range of the health parameter on every track if you wanted to. But I want to show you another cool way that you can use the health parameter. Let's add a sweeping low pass filter across the whole mix when there is a major loss of health. Now we can stay in the event editor window in our health parameter tab to do this, but I'll introduce you to an element of the event editor window that we've been ignoring a little bit so far. I'd like to introduce you to the effect deck or deck for short. The deck holds all the audio effects for a particular track. You can create and chain together as many effects as you like. To see the deck for a track, you just select it. As you can see, when we select across the different tracks, they all have different volume settings. The only module that's applied to each track at the moment is the fader. We can add more just by pressing these plus buttons. Now the order of the effects actually does impact what happens to that track because FMOD Studio will sequentially apply each effect to that track in the order that's listed. You can have a flick through all these cool effects that are right here in your own time if you like. Now to create an effect across all tracks, we need to create the effect with the master track selected. You scroll down to the bottom and your master track always lives at the bottom of your list of tracks. Just select the master track and you can see all the effects that are applied. With your master, you get the fader, the 3D panner is there by default, and then you also have a send to a reverb, which is always turned down to zero or negative infinity. All tracks in the event are automatically routed into the master track. So by creating our low pass effect here, we can affect all the tracks at once instead of adding it to each individual track. We're going to add a low pass filter effect today and we will control this filter with the health parameter. Now we'll add in our effect just by pressing this big plus button. Select add effect and then find a F mod low pass. Here we go. By using the health parameter to directly control the cutoff frequency, we will hear the audio become increasingly muffled as the player health drops. To automate this cutoff frequency, which is what controls what frequency the low pass is actually acting on, we right click on the cutoff control right here and select add automation. This gives us the same chart that we saw for the other set of automation that we added just before. This time, this scale actually applies to the cutoff that we have here. So what we want to do is at 20 points health, we want the filter to allow all frequencies to pass. At zero points health, we want the filter to pass only low frequencies, so set the end point of the curve to 250 hertz. Now let's have a listen to the effect. We're at about 40 on the health parameter right now, but if we swoop down, About here we can start to hear the cutoff taking effects really noticeably. We keep going down and it starts to sound really, really muffled. But again, to me it sounds really smooth and if the health was declining smoothly we might not even notice it very actively when we want the player to really notice that the health is dropping and is really critical. Now, to create more gravity and impact in the lowest health range, let's change the shape of the curve again. To do this, drag the diamond in the middle of the curve to produce a convex shaped curve. Now let's have a listen. We'll start it back up here. And we get a really dramatic effect. Just drop it back a little, little bit. Now it ramps up really quickly, which will let our players know that below 20 to 10, you're in pretty low range. We've got the choir coming in, so it sounds like there's something going on. But once we get below 10, there's actually like quite a lot of muffling that's going on. So the gravity that we're creating at the health points that are below 10 is really important to cueing the player to actually start acting to save their lives. Now, game players are now made aware of extremely low health and imminent death and can take immediate life-preserving action. We have therefore fulfilled one of our design objectives, which is to pass oral feedback back to the player. 
we could continue adding more effects across the entire range of player health to create more audible cues, but this is all we are going to cover today in this video. You can apply the same techniques across any of the effects on any track. Today, we have covered a few techniques for creating adaptive audio with FMOD Studio. We have covered the super flexible and important concept of gain parameters for controlling volume or track mixing and also for controlling effects on both tracks and buses in FMOD Studio events. In the next video, we'll continue working with this piece and we will add a second gain parameter intensity and we will combine it with conditional logic to skip between musical segments within our piece. From everyone on the FMOD team, thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next video.